all of us under its spell is probably some kind of magic. Hello everybody, welcome to another Monday mini medicine card reading. I am Patrick, your friendly neighborhood shaman, and I will be your reader for the evening. So the way this works, in case you're new, I am going to do one card readings from the medicine card deck for the first six people who write yes in the comments. And my only ask, the only price I ask is that you would please share this video. That's, that's, it's free video, no obligation. I just ask that you please share it. Hey, Sage. Yay, Sage, you're number one. So, and if you're either watching this in um, repeat, or if you are not one of the first six to comment yes, no problem. You can just, hey, Anna, awesome. You can still choose a number, one through six, and whatever that. Woohoo! Yay! Sage, you're number one. You made it. <laughs> if you're not one of the first six, if you just choose a number between one and six and listen to that card, I promise that whatever message you are meant to have um, will be woven into whatever message is for the person who it's aimed at, so. Hey, Valerie! All right, got you down. It's been kind of slow the last couple of... Oh, okay. Roulette and Joe are here. So, one more, we've got space for one more. And if you, if you get something out of tonight, would like to reciprocate, um, want to support my work, support your friendly neighborhood shaman, I have my PayPal and Venmo information. Uh, pinned to the top of the comments in a little tip jar. And I am gratefully accept any, any donations you wish to make. Um, this is my full-time job and I love it. And any support I get from my community is awesome and amazing. And I am so grateful for it, so. All right, so I've only got five people, so it's been kind of slow the last couple of weeks, but we actually we have, we have today was Mercury retrograde, and April Fool's Day. So, all right, so Sage. First card is for Sage. Let's see what we were working with tonight. Haha. <laughs> um, hey, Joe, good to see you. Sage, your card, you got Coyote. And so, um,. A pretty appropriate card for April Fools. <coughs> um, I'm trying to feel into what the actual message is, Sage. <coughs> um, 
I think I I I think you have been enjoying your life. Um Have you been having an easier time like not taking things so seriously? I saw your I saw your photo on on Facebook in the bunny suit and stuff. So, um yeah. <laughs> Um, it's kind of a, again, it's like a, a thumbs up from Coyote, like learning to you know, I mean, and it's it's not like, how do I put that? Um, you've always had that kind of impish spirit, right? Um, and you've always loved fun, but I don't, I think you're starting to be able to allow that part of you out more. Um, and, and I, and I, I think it, it, I think it is correlated to stepping into your power more and more, like really <coughs> being more focused inward and, and what your heart wants and focusing on your power and asking, what can I do? Rather than looking at the forces around you and other people and going, oh God, what can I do? Right, it's kind of like one is. It's like that. That um, I heard them talk. I heard someone talking about like an egg, for example. But anything in nature, if if there's pressure from the inside out, it's new birth. If the pressure is coming from the outside in, it's death. And so it's kind of like, I, I just, I get this feeling that you are becoming more and more radiant in your own power. And so it, it matters less and less what the expectations are around you. You have no ducks left to give. <laughs> exactly. It's like, poof. Um, you know, and it's like, like Oscar Wilde said, Life is too important to be taken seriously. And I really, I really think there is, there's a connection between humor and um, enlightenment. You know, I think about, I always use um, the Dalai Lama as the example, but you know, he's one of, if not the most enlightened being on the planet. And he can't go for five minutes without laughing like a kid, right? And he's always he's always up to something. He's always making jokes and and just it's like it's like the more you know we have that puritanical idea that you know spiritual life is solemn and we have to like be quiet and and to give devotion of blah, 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 when it's actually the opposite. The more spiritual you are, the more enlightened, empowered, higher frequency you gain, the more of a sense of humor you actually have, you know. And it's like that one joke about, you know, how is it that angels are able to fly? And it's because they take themselves so lightly, right? So, bravo. Coyote's like, yip, yip, let's play. So, good job, Sage. It's like, yeah, no more ducks. <laughs> And don't be surprised if, um, you know, once, once, 
once you start to see through the illusion of life, and especially like the illusion of societal rules and stuff, right? I mean, society is important. We need structure and etiquette and all of that kind of stuff. Um, Closer to fine is your theme song. Yes. Um, It's like, and that, it's like when you realize that you, like I've said before, your only source of power is creator. And you are intimately connected to source, to creator, to goddess. And you're a part of that source energy. So what could anyone possibly do to you? You are the sovereign being in your life. And there is nothing anyone can do to take that away from you. Um, Yeah, so good job. You're getting closer to fine. If I knew that song better, I would sing it, but I don't remember the song that well. But, so awesome, good for you, Sage. It's been a long time coming. I just got chills. I'm really, really happy for you. All right, Anna, card number two. Oh, I've been so tired lately. Crazy. All right. All right, Anna, card number two. Huh? Awesome. Anna, you got the mouse. (coughs) Um, Because I, you know, because we talk quite a bit and I know kind of what's going on in your life, um, this is a really good sign. Um, (laughs) I know your life has had a lot of, a, a lot of moving parts and a lot of overwhelm and, and big issues and such. And this is a, a good sign to let you know you're on the right path that it, it's like something has shifted, right? And Mouse's message is basically that, that um, saying about how, oh, excuse me again. Oh, don't sweat the small stuff. It's all small stuff. Like, Mouse's world is pretty small. He doesn't worry about what's going on in the next yard. He doesn't worry about the cat down the block. He doesn't care about what's going on in Washington, D.C. or the other side of the planet. (laughs) His world is um, complete in itself. And, (coughs) you know, I... um, I was just talking to a client about this yesterday. Um, it's like like what I just said to Sage. It's like our heart is what connects us to Creator. That's our only source of power. That's our only source of information. You know, when we tend to get, like especially when we have a choice to make or there's a change in our life or something like that, and we tend to overthink it and overcomplicate things because we're trying to go through, you know, kind of dive into the mind of every person who this thing is going to affect. And we take, try to take them into consideration. Like, well, if I, if I, I move in this certain direction, 
then this other person is going to be out of a job or this other person is going to have to reevaluate their life or this person is going to think I'm abandoning them, abandoning them or whatever it is. And all that does is shuts us down and makes us indecisive. Um, because not only does your heart connect you to creator, your heart connects you to everybody on the planet. We are all connected heart to heart. And so <coughs> your only guidance is your heart. Does it feel, again, that, that shackles on, shackles off feeling? Does this, if you, you know, move in this certain direction, does it feel like, like restrictive, like taking your power away, or does it feel freeing and empowering? And that simple feeling takes into account how it is going to affect everybody on the planet. You don't have to take a poll. You don't have to ask permission. You don't have to justify yourself. Your heart is what connects you to all of the people being affected. And so if your heart says yes, that is a yes that that is for the highest good of everybody else as well. Okay? Um, we're living in a non-zero-sum game. When one of us does better, when, when we all do better, we all do better. So nothing can be for your betterment and be to the detriment of someone else. Okay? And so if your heart says yes, straight ahead, um, engage, it's that, that guidance is for the highest good of everybody. Now, the tricky part is that not everyone is going to see it that way <laughs> because <clears throat> there are people, sometimes we enable people by simply not acting on our highest good. And we're afraid, well, this person is going to take it really hard or they're going to think poorly of me, blah, blah, blah. And so we let that squelch what is for our highest good. And the people who benefit from that squelching don't want you to change because they are getting something from you. They are, are sapping your energy. They're getting a benefit from it, um, not for their highest good, because it's more of a siphoning. And so you, for you to say, I am going straight ahead, come hell or high water, um, do it with love, do it from the heart, do it with compassion, knowing that these other people will probably be upset because they're depending on you not moving forward in your life. Right? Um, the people who, the people who accuse you of being selfish are the same people that benefit from you not setting boundaries, right? And so if you make a decision, you're going to go straight ahead with this thing that brings joy to your heart and other people are going to say, oh, you're so selfish. What about me? And you can just say, well, what about you? Now that you're not tied to me not being in my power, you have the perfect opportunity to step into your power. But that's up to you. You now have a choice. I made my choice. You now have a choice of how you are going to respond, whether you're going to um, take inspiration by this and realize there's more to your life than what you've been doing and charge forward as well, or are you going to play the victim and, and use excuses to try to stay where you are and find somebody else to siphon energy off of? Um, does that all make sense? And so, and I keep, I, I keep seeing these things on, online, on Facebook and stuff about how, 
if, if, you know, if you are true to yourself, you know, not everyone is going to like you that, um, if everybody likes you, you're doing something wrong. Um, because like that other, that other thing too, that when you're true to yourself, your truth and your light irritates other people's inner demons. And so you can't allow other people's reactions to hold you back from what's your highest good. Because like I said, your highest good is the highest good for everyone on the planet, for the universe, for all beings. Because we're all connected. It, it isn't, it isn't a, a, an algebra um, equation where if you borrow from one side, you know, if you add to one side, you have to take it from the other side. So one person wins and one person, lo one person loses. Um, they're, they're, if, if somebody's losing, then everybody loses. But if somebody win is winning, everybody wins. Um, it may take them a lifetime or two to actually realize that, um, to let those seeds that you're planting in their heart by acting from your heart um, to germinate and to grow, but it will have an effect. And the truth is, by, by listening to your heart moving forward in your life in the direction of joy, like, like Joseph Campbell talked about following your bliss, you're raising your frequency, right? And these other people, you know, you're down here, you're raising your frequency. And these people down here are going to get upset because you're no longer on their frequency. So they, they necessarily either have to grow if they want to stay with you, or they have to disappear from your frequency. And there's nothing wrong with either of those options. And there's, um, you know, it's like when you raise that frequency, anything that isn't of a higher frequency, of that high frequency, has to necessarily leave. And that's what opens the door for others to come in that better reflect your authentic self, who who fit your worldview, who are whole onto themselves, um, and can better where there's not like down here is like there's this codependence, right? And when you're asking, well, what how is it going to affect everyone else? That's codependence. You're making your destiny dependent on how someone else reacts. But when you move up and break those, those um, cords of codependence, then you attract people into your life who are whole unto themselves. And so they love you and they support you because they see who you are because they know who they are. There's no ulterior motives. They're not trying to lift you up so that they can then use it against you the next time that that you know that they need something. There's there's none of that power play. So um, it's really simple. Shackles on or shackles off. Whatever your heart, if your heart says hell yes. It's for everyone's benefit. And that's such a hard concept for people to get because we live in such a, a binary world, a world of duality. But it's a non, uh, below the seeming duality, below the, the binary, it is a non-dual universe. Everything is one. There is only one of us here. We just have different faces and different masks different experiences. We're all a part of the same being. So good job, Anna.
You're moving forward. All right, Valerie. Card number three. All right, Valerie, you got Fox in reverse. <coughs> um, so Fox medicine, Fox is kind of the ninja of the animal kingdom. And so Fox medicine <coughs> is about that cloak of invisibility, right? It's about um, watching without being seen. It's like, like being the wind, uh, the fly on the wall, right? And <coughs> in reverse, Fox tends to be suggesting that it is time to be seen. It's time to get yourself out there to um, you know it's it's like when I when I um, <coughs> when I graduated from Sandra Ingerman's uh, two-year training um, her her main guide, Spirit guide is, is the goddess Isis. And then, and so she basically channeled Isis and each of us got to get a personal message from her. And the one I got was, your confusion is just a distraction. Let it go and own your power. Something like that. The first part I got right. I can't remember what the second part but it was something about stepping into your power. But the first part, it's like your confusion is just a distraction. And, you know, Fox is a master of illusion. In every culture that Fox is a part of, they're considered magical and they cast glamours and illusions. And in reverse, it can be kind of getting caught in your own illusions, getting caught in the illusion of the duality, the world of duality, like I was just talking about. And so it's time to be able to see through the, the illusion. Um, see to your power and realize that the confusion and the illusion going on are all a reflection of yourself. And it's like, keep it, it's almost like, like I was just talking about codependence and it's almost like being codependent to yourself. It's like realizing that you're the one who is formulating these illusions and the confusion. Um, and so, like, and it's not about going out and challenging those illusions because that just solidifies them, right? Um, it's about dropping into your heart, into your alignment, and seeing through the eyes of spirit what is true, what is real, and what is not. Um, I just, it's so funny because I just, just before this video, I've been taking this, there's um, this monthly healing class, um, Zoom class with Lisa Williams that I've been taking. And tonight she was talking all about um, how we, we, when, like when we introduce ourselves, like, hi, you know. I'm Patrick and I have trouble with this or I, you know, I have back trouble or I have, you know, a gimpy leg or whatever it is that we tend to identify with these things, with these patterns of, of diseases or 
you know, roles or whatever, rather than just stopping at, I am Patrick, dropping into your identity below any of the labels, um, and, and finding that safety in your own energy, in your own heart of being who you are without tying your identity to anything outside of you, circumstances or illnesses or conditions, you know, physical conditions or whatever it is. It's like dropping the illusion of victimhood and claiming your power so that you can use the illusions and the glamour to help forward yourself and to help other people. I always, I always think of Fox, you know, Fox is closely related to Wolf, right? And Wolf is the teacher. And so Fox has some of that teacher in it, in him. And I think of Fox as being, you know, it's the epitome of that, that quote from Bruce Lee about not mistaking the moon the finger pointing at the moon for the moon itself, right? And because Fox has the the cape of invisibility, the power of illusion, Fox can go, hey, what's that? And direct someone's attention at something and then disappear so that the person has to take credit for whatever that realization, that, re that revelation is. Um, so the fox can help, like, <laughs> bringing it back to Star Trek, fox can be like the visionary, like Gene Roddenberry, like creating this illusion of this world where everyone gets along, where there is peace and, and there's no money and everyone lives to their highest potential and is nurtured to be their greatest person. That exploration and curiosity are the driving forces of the world, right? And so he created this whole show to give us a feeling, an image of what life could be like. Um, and that's what Fox can do. It's like give that, that vision to someone and then disappear into the wallpaper so that that person has to like take to heart what that discovery is rather than like, oh my God, you, thank you for showing me that, you know, be, you know, folk, you know becoming enamored of the messenger rather than the message. Um, there was something else I was going to say as well. Oh, and part of it is that, you know, especially empaths, we have this ability, especially when we're younger, to disappear, to, you know, we tend to be called last for teams, for sports, and we kind of, kind of a lot of times we can avoid being called on in, in class, uh, different things like that. We perfected this um, invisibility, this disappearing act. And when it comes time to be seen, to make ourselves known, the fear is that it's an either or, that okay, if I make myself seen, then I no longer have my, my cloak of invisibility. And that is not how it works. It's not an either or, it's a both and. If you have those, those um, powers of illusion and glamour and invisibility, you're not being asked to give those up in exchange for being seen. You're asked, being asked to step temporarily out of that illusion, to speak, to be seen, to teach, to help, whatever it is, and then you can disappear back into the neither nether nether realms and the invisibility and everything like that. Um, and, and the whole thing is there's a point to having learned those abilities, right? And this is the next step. It's like, now that you've perfected that, that's your safety. 
that's your your shelter so you can go and be seen for short jaunts and then disappear again and be safe so it's not about going out and being on the soapbox on the street corner you know um it's about just taking those first steps out of invisibility it's time to be seen in whatever way that means whether it's <laughs> you know, doing readings or making videos or volunteering someplace or being a tutor or whatever it is. It's time to be seen. It's time to share all the things that you've been learning, right? It's, it's, it's graduation time. You haven't been learning all these things just, you know, like, like they say, a ship is safest when it's in the harbor, right? But a ship isn't built to sit in the harbor. A ship is built to go out on the seas. <laughs> and so all this time you've been building this ship, building this ship, and you finally got this beautiful ship. It's got, it's sound, it's got structure, it's seaworthy. Now you've got to take it out of the harbor. So... You're welcome. I hope that makes sense. All right. So our number four for roulette. And for anyone that's come in later, there's actually one spot left for the first person to say yes in the comments. To still get a, get a one card reading. Otherwise, just, you can... Choose a number between one and six and just follow by number and whatever that number is. Um, we'll have your message as well. And also, like I always say too, even if you have a card, oh, cool. I take off my glasses to see your name, Carly. <laughs> awesome. All right. So we have our six. So if you aren't one of those six, we are on card number four. You can choose a number between like four, five, or six, or all of them. Or if you want to rewatch this at some point and choose one through six, that works as well. But I always tell people, even if you have a card, to listen to the other cards because there's always a thread that runs through. And if if it's within your awareness, it is meant for you. If, if, if there's something, if I say something and it's somebody else's card, but it resonates with you, then that is for you as well. Don't discount things just because that got someone else's name on it. All right, roulette. My sister from another mister. All right, roulette, you got links. Um, I know you've gotten links before. I'm positive of it. <coughs> and links is the matron saint of psychics and seers. Um, You have been doing a lot of work. Have you been doing a lot of kind of shadow work? And um, it's like Lynx is the keeper of secrets. Lynx um, doesn't look at you as much as she looks through you. Like she knows everything there is to know about you before you even say a word. <coughs> And the reason she can do that is because um, the only way that she can keep um, those secrets, like to see those secrets and to observe them, is if she has no secrets of her own. That she is that hollow bone that I talk about in shamanism, right? 
It's like to become that clearer and clearer channel for spirit to move through um, and to allow our own true self, our own, our own spirit to move through and to become more present in the world. Um, and so again, like, good job. Oh, awesome. So you have been doing a lot of work. I had a feeling, you know, and it's like the clearer we get in ourselves, the more clearly we can see others, right? <clears throat> but at the same time, um, when we do the shadow work, when we do our inner work and we can let go of the self-criticism and the self-judgments, then we can observe someone and see it all, you know, we can see what's going on with others or feel what's going on with someone. And again, there's no judgment because we don't have judgment of ourselves. We're becoming a clearer mirror for them as well as being more receptive for the person as a whole person rather than just accepting parts, you know. Um, and it's really, it's kind of the spirit of the namaste saying, right? The, the divine in me sees the divine in you. <coughs> it's like you have to be aware of your own divinity to see it in someone else. And... Um, to have moved through, you know, and, and it's not like, like, woohoo, you're done, you've peaked, right? We're, we never, we're, there's always more to go. We're always evolving. We're always growing. We're always changing. We're always becoming more of who we are. But you've made a definite, a definite, um, definite step forward um, in not only seeing the things around you, but seeing the things within you, like having the courage to look at the things within us that we are guilty of or ashamed of or whatever and to forgive ourselves, right? Um, and that's what allows us to see it in other people. But then, like I said, she's the keeper of secrets. <coughs> she's not the gossiper of secrets. She's not the giver of secrets. She's the keeper of secrets. And so, um, it's, it's really, it comes down to that recognition of every person's sovereignty and every person's, um, how do I put it? That every person has their own path, their own unique path. They're here for specific reasons with specific lessons to learn that are no, or no better or less than, uh, better or worse than anyone else's path. And so holding that space, seeing beyond the facade, beyond the fears or the guilt or the shame someone ha is holding for themselves and holding that vision of them as whole, right? And that's what helps them move more into their own wholeness. Um, but, you know, as light workers, as healers, as readers, we don't volunteer information. We wait until we are asked. We're the keeper of secrets. Even if we know something, we don't volunteer unless, you know, and, and, and there's, you know, it's a spectrum like anything else. There's gray areas. And like, you know, if you know, if you're close, intimate friends with someone and you know something, um, you know, you can ask permission to tell them what you see, but 
in claiming your own sovereignty, your own secrets, your own power, you have to necessarily respect the sovereignty and the power of everybody else and know that just like you have your guidance and you have your support, seen and unseen, so does every person on the planet. And so it's not up to you to save the world. It's not up to you to fix every different person. Again, it's kind of interesting. Cats and mice, right? Like I was talking about mouse earlier with Anna. Um, <coughs> it's not up to you to save the world. Everything you need is right here. Girl, you in danger? I don't get that. I'm not sure what that means or that. Um, but you have definitely been clearing a lot of stuff. I'd be willing to say that right now you can see yourself clearer than you ever have before. You have you have you have touched something and come into contact with more of your authentic essence. Oh, from ghost! Ha 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 ha! I haven't seen that in forever. Ha <laughs> ha! Now I know what you're talking about. Um, yep. Um, yeah. So good job. And again, like I was talking about that with Valerie about fox medicine, it's the same thing. It's like that essence of who you are is beyond harm. There, There is nothing that can harm that part, that essence of your soul, that eternal part of you. And so that is where your safety um, lies, that is where your power lies, and that is where, you know, we look with our heart in order to see that divine light within every person, every being, so, good job. <laughs> All right, Joe. My brother from another mother. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And what's on the other side? Wonder Twin Powers, activate! <laughs> um, okay. For those who might not know, Roulette and Joe are a couple, a very close couple, and that is just amazing. Um, you both got link so you're both you're you're like working on this together so the image that just came into my head um you know on indiana jones and the and the temple of doom and they've got those two stones that when you bring them together they start to shine That's you guys, that's what you're doing. As one of you raises your frequency, you're drawing the other person up with you. And it's kind of like, like going up this ladder. It's like one of you goes up and the other one gets pulled up and goes up and then the next one goes up. And it's like, you're like ladder stepping yourselves up to enlightenment or fulfillment or whatever you want to call it. <coughs> but it's like, It 
it, it's just this beautiful, it's like DNA. It's like you're like the, the double helix revolving around each other. And like the, the ladder steps is like being able to see each other. Being able, I just got chills. You guys are amazing. Um, God. <laughs> um, being able to see the other person so clearly to see their wholeness and their perfection of spirit, which reflects back into seeing your own wholeness of spirit, which reflects in being able to see the other one even more whole and clearly. You guys, it's amazing. Absolutely super strong energy between you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. I'm, I'm like, I'm not even sure what else to say. Um, because it's not like, like other times when it, like the same card might come up a couple of times or like that one night when, when turtle came up three times in a row and each time was a different reading. Each time was a different, a different message. This is like, this is both of you looking at each other as, as mirrors of each other, seeing the best in each other, drawing forth the best in each other. Um, and I, I, I honestly don't know. That's all I have to say about that. I love you guys. I love you guys so much. That is awesome. All right. Good. That is perfect, huh, Joe? All right, Carly. Card number six. I might actually, I might actually get done before nine. I love you too, guys. You guys are so incredible. We still need to get together. We keep talking about getting together. We never do. Valerie still has that dark crystal game that we've been dying to try. So, anyway. Carly, card number six. All right, Carly, you got bat in reverse. Um, I'm gonna get, are you going through some big changes right now? Um, bat, when bat comes up, it tends to be um, new birth rebirth, but we tend to focus on that rebirth part and we don't take into consideration the death that has to happen for that birth to occur. And in reverse, um, it can be kind of that digging in your heels, resisting the change, which only makes it harder um, so one of the messages that comes with bat, it's like when bat comes up, it's kind of, it's, it's like you're in the cave, you're going into the dark, you're in the dark. <laughs> it might be a full blown dark night of the soul, or it could be, um, not as, as critical as that. But still, there's change coming, and you're you're basically returning to the womb, right? <laughs> and especially in our society, we tend we we tend to try to stay away from the unknown. We try to have all the answers, and if we don't know what's going to happen, we we plug in, you know, whatever 
mental fantasies we have, which usually entails the worst case scenario, right? <laughs> but the darkness is the womb of the cosmic mother. And just like when you are in your physical mother's womb, you are safer than you will ever be in your life. Right now, the universe is holding you, is holding space for you. You are safer now than you have ever been. And the darkness is serving a number of different purposes. The darkness um, I actually that's interesting. I just had a <coughs> shamanic journey that I had um, a few months ago and one of my guides was talking about um, Okay, starting to, I'm starting to lose it. Okay. Okay. Darkness. It's it's easier. <clears throat> how did I how did he put this? In the darkness, it's easier to feel connected to all things. In the darkness, there is no separation. Everything is a part of everything else. It's when we have light that we can distinguish between one hand and the other hand, right? But in darkness, it's just one, right? And so in that darkness of the womb, you can actually better access your oneness with the universe, right? Your connectedness to the goddess, to mother, cosmic mother. Um, and it's in that darkness that we find it easier to access our higher senses, right? Um, I, I, I am willing, I would bet dollars to donuts, as my friend always says, that your intuition has been kicking up at least a couple of notches. Because, you know, bat, lists, bat navigates through sound through literal vibration, right? And so your, your senses are keying up and scratch my nose, which means the spirits are here. Someone said that when you're doing a reading and your nose starts to itch, it means you're right on the nose. So I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> That's my story, I'm sticking with it. Um, your senses are being keyed up to be more sensitive to the more subtle vibrations of the universe. So that rather than navigating through your eyes, which is kind of through your head, through your brain, through your mind, you're learning to feel your way forward, to feel the vibrations, to navigate from the heart rather than from the head. Okay. Um, but the hard part about this is that in order to be reborn, you know, something has to die. And <clears throat> we tend to, I, like I was talking earlier about who, what we identify, if we identify with our essence, with our heart, or if we identify with the conditions around us, like I'm so lazy or I'm no good at that, whatever that story is <clears throat> that we tie our identity to, that's the part that needs to die. That's our story. That's not who you are. And so that's like a false identity that has to um, be set aside in order for the true self of you to emerge, okay? Um, <clears throat> the way I always think about it is that, you know, <clears throat> the everything, your foundation is shaking up, right? It's all the things that you used to rely on, <clears throat> the things <clears throat> that would stabilize you, no longer can support you, you know. Um, it's if you know it's at least 
shaky, if not like giving way. Um, so <clears throat> rather than, gosh, I didn't have my water with me. <coughs> um, give me a second. Hold that thought. Ah. Sorry about that. I should know better than to do these readings without having water available. So, rather than grounding into the systems, to the world that supported you before, because that is having to recalibrate. Remember, like I said, um, with, with mouse about raising your frequency, <coughs> You are in the process of leveling up. You are in the process of raising your frequency. So these things that used to define you, where you used to find your safety, can no longer define you. They are, they're falling away. And the good news is that this wouldn't be happening unless... you are ready for it unless there was something that that you're coming into more congruence into more alignment with your true self <coughs> and it's that act of alignment that is pushing the other stuff out because you're changing you're growing you're this is a birth and so rather than grounding to the old world, to the old systems, to the old tricks you would use to feel safe and whatever, um, that hangs from the ceiling, right? And so it's time to ground upward. It's time to ground to spirit. Like I was just saying that that part, that essence of you, that part of you that is eternal, that is unharmable. I don't know if that's even a word, but um, and to focus on that, be the eye of the storm and allow everything else around you to sort itself out. You don't have to fix everything. You don't have to make things work out. You just have to align, be the eye of the storm and trust, know that, again, this wouldn't be happening if Things wouldn't be being pushed out of your life if there wasn't something bigger be coming into your life, right? Like, <clears throat> like when a snake sheds its skin, for instance, right? It's the same process. <clears throat> it's not the snake sheds its skin and then it grows its new skin. It's the new skin expanding that shreds the old skin. And so if things are falling apart right now, it's because that which will hold you, that which will support you is already present, is making itself known in your life. And so you can trust the process, okay? I know it's not easy. But when you're in the dark, when there is no clear path forward, it's time to rest. And what do we do when we're resting? What do we do when it's dark? We dream, right? So take this time, you know, journal or vision board or just daydream. Give yourself permission to daydream about who do you want to be? What do you want to do? What do you want your life to look like on the other side of this? And <clears throat> by doing that, that's how we plug our destination into the, the cosmic GPS system. That's how we set our intentions. And then the universe necessarily has to take us step by step to that fulfillment. So... Hoofda. So I hope that makes sense, Carly.
I hope that is helpful and um, yeah so I am going to pull one more card for the community for this week and while I am doing so I'm going to remind you that to please share this video good I'm so glad that made sense so glad that made sense you are so welcome it is it is totally my pleasure and my privilege and honor to help. That's who I am. That's what I do. So, so I'm going to pull one more card for the community. And with a little reminder to please share this video. And um, if you feel, if you are thus moved to that you wish to reciprocate, I have my uh, PayPal and Venmo info pinned to the top of the comments in a tip jar. And thank you so much for anything you wish to give. And if you would like a full-on reading or healing or teaching, um, you can check my website at perchingwolfstudios.net and you can learn more about me. You can um, peruse the shamanic readings, healings, and teachings, oh my, that I offer. And you can actually set up a session with me right there from my page. Um, and once we're done here, I am going to share this video to my, my Perching Will Studios Facebook page. I'm also going to upload it to my Perching Will Studios YouTube channel. So come visit my YouTube channel Please subscribe and <clears throat> like my videos. That helps me out. Um, helps other people. It makes it more accessible to other people, apparently. I don't understand those algorithms or whatever, but, but this will be up there so you can re-watch it if you forgot what I said or you want to later on in the week choose a different number and see what the message is there. Or I have over four years worth of these videos with readings and videos of, of um, ceremony and stories and songs and all kinds of good stuff. So, so check that out. Um, also, a reminder that coming up this month, the fourth Tuesday of this month, I am going to be starting a new year, uh, like a first year shaman class. It's a year long course on shamanism where we meet once a month for a three hour class and we explore the different aspects of shamanism. So you get to spend an entire year on the shamanic path with your friendly neighborhood shaman. And um, it, it is, it, I, I have the best seats in the house, getting to watch people change and grow and empower themselves and learn. And um, it, well, guaranteed change your life. I can promise you that. I've been, I think this is the eighth, eighth year I've done it. And I can say with confidence from experience that it will change your life. And that it, it, it is not the easiest path, of course, but it is so well worth it. So you can get that information either on my, on my um, three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. Yep. The shaman started getting lost. Um, <clears throat> what was I going to say? <clears throat> anyway, so that you can find on my website and on my Facebook page as well, the, all the information for that. I have a number of different options for paying, whatever is, is best for you. Um, and I think that is it for the moment. So <laughs> I'm going to have that in my head. The shaman started getting lost. So our last card of the evening <laughs> it's 
squeaky squeaky. So keep it simple. There is nothing that is beyond you. If it is not in your immediate sphere of influence, there is nothing to worry about. There is nothing to fear. Everything you need is right here, right now. The present is your point of power. And so no matter what it is, if it's something going on on the other side of the planet or in you know, Congress or whatever, let it go. It's not important. The best thing you can do for the world is be present to focus on your own path and your own growth. Because like I said, we're all connected heart to heart. And every little step you take toward your enlightenment and t toward your authenticity, your sovereignty, you raise everyone else as well. So keep it simple. M-I-C, see you real soon. K-E-Y, why? Because we love you. M-O-U-S-E. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for spending your, your Monday evening with me. Um, I enjoy this so much and I, I so am so grateful for everyone who tunes in, who watches later. And um, I hope you will come to see me next week. Same bat time, same, <laughs> same bat channel. Um, and until then, know that I love you, that I see you, and that I honor you. Have a wonderful week, everyone, and go shining. All right.